Who should handle your social media business? Now this is thoughtful. Hello, I'm Kitty Bu in Shanghai. We frequently talk about social media strategies and case studies on our show because it's a fast-growing area. Marketers are putting more and more money and emphasis on their social media activity. And in these conversations, one thing has become very clear to us: everyone wants a piece of the social media business and feels a legitimate claim to it. Creative agencies, media agencies, digital agencies, and PR firms all say it falls into their expertise. And now there's a small but growing crop of dedicated social media agencies trying to peel away budgets from other agencies. Marketers are often handling it in-house too. This week on Thoughtful China, we'll put the question to our panelists, and David Wolf will share a thought or two about the questions clients should be asking about their social media strategy. But first, with us is Ram Narayan, Unilever's VP of Brand Building for Foods and Refreshment in China. Welcome to our studio. Let's start with a more general question here. How important is social media for Unilever in China? I think social media is、uh, is very important for us because for any marketer, wherever the、uh, people that our brands serve, wherever they are spending time on, it's important for us then to be there. And in the context of China, when you have you know about four hundred odd people, four hundred million people, and on social media, spending you know a big chunk of the time.、Uh, 45, 50 minutes a day on an average,、um, and trusting views of their people, of you know, of their friends, of their relatives, of people whom they follow, it obviously then becomes critical、uh, for any marketer, for any of you know, to to be there. So it's、uh, it's very important for us. Yeah. If social media is critical for your strategy in China, then、uh, give me a rough idea of how much the budget devoted to this area has been changing in the past years. Is it expanding? So.、Um, Well, we've been growing exponentially in terms of how much we are spending in this area,、uh, but not as much as we would still like to,、uh, because it's a little bit of, you know, invest, learn, seek, then expand. Because we also make lots of mistakes in terms of you know how we're approaching this. It's a it's a new area for us also.、Um, but over the last two three years,、uh, I would say that we've doubled our investment from when we started off. Um, and going forward, we will keep emphasizing it even more.、Um, but、uh, in terms of, you know, the the support structures that allow one to invest even more, like you know, ROI models, me, you know, methods of measurement,、uh, they're still not so robust enough.、Uh, so as that progresses, then it gives more confidence. So it's a bit of evolution. But we are very happy with、uh, how we are progressing, and it will see more and more investment as we progress. You mentioned just now that the past few years have been a very good learning curve. So, share with us a specific example of, say, a memorable lesson or a big mistake you've made that、uh, you want other people to learn from your your past.、Um, let me put it so. Let me start with、uh, one of the brands that、uh, you know we work with is Cornetto,、uh, and、uh, when we started in 2010. Uh, we we started with a micro movie as an idea, yeah, and it was just beginning at that time.、Mm-hmm. So we created these beautiful micro movies,、um, and、uh, we used social media as a way of you know allowing people to then express their views, forward it, and you know interact with it, engage with it,、uh, and we got about 40 million views, which was pretty good at that time. Yeah, yeah. and we yeah. thought, okay, so there's something that we can learn from. Then、um, in 2012. Uh, so that was 2011. Sorry. Then in 2012,、uh, we worked on it, and then we ended the year with 330 million views.、Uh, yeah. So we kind of worked on it, saw what made sense, how can we make it more relevant to consumers, how can we find a way that they can engage even more,、um, and then we learned even more on that. So this year, our Cornetto campaign,、uh, we've hit 370 million views in the first 73 days of、uh, being online. So it's an evolution, and as we've learned,、uh, we kind of moved on,、uh, and then it's made more and more of an impact. Yeah. So move on to our more specific topic for today. So who do you think should handle your social media in China? Then, <laughs> seems like everybody seems to have a rightful claim to it. So from the client's perspective, who do you think should、uh, should really rightly own it? 
Well, like you rightly said, I think it's, uh, it's, it's an area where there are no rights or wrongs and everybody has a right to have the view. And uh, so from our perspective, we also believe that different partners uh, have strengths in different areas. Yeah? And as uh, you know, social media has kind of taken off from 2004, FI has its evolved and now built critical scale, um, agencies have also moved from where they have been traditionally leveraging on traditional strengths and moving into social media. So they carry a lot of their traditional skills, uh, traditional strengths into social media. And hence for us, it's, we, we work with many of, our, many of the partners because we rely on their strengths. But equally, we have a strong point of view that the brand owners um, have and necessarily need to be very deeply engaged, uh, especially with the strategy, the brand point of view, um, you know, an understanding of the people whom the brand serve, uh, and what is meaningful for them, and hence the content, uh, not only the strategy, but also the so-called, I could let's say, quality uh, kind of controllers uh, of the content that we kind of work with. Uh, so the brand owners have a significant role to play, but agencies have strengths, uh, you know, which we leverage on, especially in the areas of social listening, um, you know, uh, content creation, content uh, pulling from different parts of the world. Uh, working with key opinion leaders. Uh, so those are areas where agencies have far better strengths than we have. So I think it's a combination. Uh, but uh, you know, we would love over a period of time to see agencies uh, kind of you know, developing end-to-end -end expertise, uh, which will then be fantastic. So you mentioned just now that each group has their own strength, right? So let's say among creative agency, digital agency, uh, PR firms, and media agencies, what are each of their strengths? So, um, you know, it requires, so let me put it, look at different ways of, you know, how we work with social media. So first is to, you know, understand um, where the people, the brands serve are and, you know, what are they talking about, what are the kind of uh, areas that they're interested in. Uh, so th there's a lot of listening involved and then taking that listening uh, from a perspective of the brand and making some sense out of it as to how can then we, uh, you know, make it, uh, make our brands relevant to the people they serve. So we need agencies that do a lot of listening. Yeah? So that's an area which uh, we really need uh, help on, and I think there are agencies there who are very good at it. Uh, then once we have that idea, then uh, you know, even about uh, having a strategy, because now you understand what people are, how your brand can engage with uh, the people they serve, then developing a strategy, uh, because social media by itself uh, can't do too much unless you have a content and then link it with your social media. So how do those two link together? What kind of content are you going to put out there? And content can be search-based, can be video-based, can, can be game-based, it can be anything. So what is then relevant for the brand? So we need help with the strategy. Then about developing the content. For example, uh, Knorr, uh, with, our, uh, with our Thanga uh, site, we, we, we put in close to you know, eight to 10 uh, pieces of content every day. Um, 365 days a year, uh, weekends slight less, but uh, it's every day. So we need people to work with us. We need agencies who can then develop content which is, uh, you know, relevant uh, to the people can ourselves. So content creation, uh, and then equally we work with key opinion leaders. We would like to have people, uh, you know, talking about Knorr, people who are popular in the cooking uh, kind of area. So we need agencies to work there also. So I think these are two, three areas where uh, we uh, work with agencies pretty closely. So do you use one agency for everything, you know, digital, creative, um, activation, or, or do you divide it among different groups? Uh, no, we don't, uh, at least with the brands in, in Foods and Refreshment, we work with agencies in different uh, areas, so we work with two or three agencies on each of our brands. Do you feel there is enough expertise, though, right now, and also mm -hmm. enough options to really help you to use social media in China, to really help your business in China? I think in, in, all, in all humility, I think all of us are learning. Uh, it, it, as, because one, the pace of change is so fast. Yeah? Uh, and second, it's fairly new. So, yeah, so oh, everybody's learning. Yeah? Um, so if, if I were to say that you know, there is not so much of expertise outside, it's really unfair because there's not so much of expertise inside also. Yeah? So all of us are learning. Uh, but for one, I think expertise is building very rapidly. Um, and as much as it's building, the, you know, the, the social media scene is also developing and evolving. So we are almost always catching up. Yeah? 
Um, but I must say that over the last two years, the uh, kind of um, uh, engagement that we see, the kind of understanding that our own brand managers are having uh, has significantly ramped up. Well, Ram Narayan, thank you for being in our studio and being on Thoughtful China today. Well, thanks for having me on the show. Thank you. The problem we face figuring out who should be handling your social media in China today is this. We have been in such a headlong rush to figure out how we can use social media that we haven't stopped to ask how we should be using it. We're not asking that question because it implies that some agencies should simply stay out of social media altogether. That's a dangerous discussion. Social media absorbs so much of the public's time and attention that agencies feel they either must create a social media offering or they will die. So each type of agency sees social media through their own prism. Advertisers approach it as another form of advertising or as an appendage of offline campaigns. PR people approach it as a fast channel to reporters or as a way to bypass journalists altogether. Digital agencies approach social media as a way to drive hits to digital content lodged elsewhere. And social media specialists want us to believe that social media is so different that it demands a special mojo and it should be left to them as experts. They're all wrong because they're ignoring what social media does that is unique. It is a space where people, not brands, dominate the channel. So the trick to winning social media is to get other people talking about you and delivering your messages. And the more influential those people are on the behavior of others, the better. Who should be handling your social media? Someone who's used to cultivating influencers over time. Someone who understands how to develop and support powerful messages and someone who knows how to monitor opinion, respond rapidly and appropriately in the face of a crisis or opportunity, whether that is a product problem or corporate scandal. Find that and you found your answer. Thanks, David. With us now in the studio is uh, Doug Pierce, China CEO, Omnicom Media Group, Andrew Collins, Chief of Staff at Mailman, and Tina Hu, General Manager and Head of Consulting Service at CIC. Welcome to our studio. Thanks. Doug, let's start with you. Are you seeing a rising interest in social media among your clients in oh, China? Oh, definitely, definitely we are. And that really is driven by the huge amount of people and consumers you know, accessing social media for many, many hours each day. So yeah, a lot of interest from our clients in what can we do, how do we do it well, and how can we be the best at it. What about budget? Are you also seeing the same increasing budget? Uh, the budgets are slow to move. Uh, it's more a case of actually getting a budget, I would say, rather than perhaps having a budget there that's increasing, but it's actually getting that budget from the client to allocate money to social media. If social media is so important, why is getting money so difficult? You would it's imagine not. It's a matter of uh, getting through the, the processes of what can we really do, how can a client maximise the, the opportunity in social media, and how can we leverage that across what we do. So when we get an opportunity to talk to clients, we can generally convince them that, of the need for social media. I, I think like further to Doug's point, the, the closer the alignment between making money from social media and money spent on social media becomes, and it has got a lot closer, brands are now seeing a, a direct benefit um, of creating more value and more enriched content through those social media channels, more budget will come. But it's been such a big question within the industry, you know, okay, how do I make money from social media? So the guys who are answering those questions most effectively um, will help uh, you know, across the industry as best practices improve and everyone starts to adopt it. M many clients are doing it a little bit themselves. And I think it's how you can move that little bit to doing a lot and then ultimately with a sale or a, an engagement part of coming out, out of the outcome of social media. I think uh, we see brands are getting better at, at uh, uh, generating a very relevant engagement with the consumers. They are doing better at, at that. And also we see some trend uh, where the metamorphosis from social marketing to social business is becoming reality. So it's relating back to Doug's point is about how brands or business organizations being able to use social media not just for better marketing communication but also for better outcome for the entire organization for the business growth uh, across the disciplines. So that's why we have like uh, for instance um, brands from pharmaceutical companies coming to us for R&D work by listening to what consumers are talking about around oral care, for instance. 
So uh, that's the kind of change that we see is happening as becoming a more prominent trend. So I think the struggle of um, which department should own this uh, social budget is actually a very clear manifestation of how you know, organizations should be doing things differently. Mm -hmm. Moving on a little bit to today's specific question, like who should own social media, what type of agencies do you think is best suited to tackle this? Should it be done simply just in-house? Well, from our point of view, it's another communication output and communication delivery. And we think the advantage of social is it can drive so much of everything else that we do. And you know, to, to drive con comment, uh, sharing is so important that our other messages and other content we're developing can be increased. The number of people watching it, sharing it, enjoying it, reading it, acting on it can all be increased by driving the social side of things. It also helps on our search business because if people want to learn more about the product or the, or the offering or the celebrity or whatever we're talking about, they can then get online and search that. So we're creating content, we're using social to drive that and it's helping our search. So it all does come together. And of course, we're doing now a lot more mobile marketing work as well. So from our point of view, <laughs> uh, you know, we think a communication, media planning and buying agency like us is well, well suited to do that. And, and it's also, it's, it's just another craft. Like, of course, an agency should support it just like an agency should mm -hmm. support media planning. It's a specialised skill that requires um, insights to do that particular role. Same as doing social media. It's not just like, oh, we can create an account that we can manage it. Chinese internet uh, users are very savvy. In fact, critical of brands that get it wrong or don't respect the fans. I mean, we do a lot in sports, but if, um, if a club posts out a message um, that's maybe too promotional or they don't use the right connotations for that language, um, they get slammed and, and the, the fans just jump on it and the, you know, reeks of inauthenticity and uh, it doesn't really support the brand. So you, you as experts, just like any trade, you need to develop your skill set, get better at doing it and demonstrate why it's more valuable for an agency to take that on. Yeah, so from our observation, I think uh, as for now, uh, depending on the current stage of uh, social business maturity, uh, I think uh, different agencies still have a big role to play. Mm -hmm. We are all learning, agency and mm -hmm. also client. Both are learning, but then uh, I think uh, uh, as this progresses, um, we see that more advanced clients, they may have this intention to own maybe part of it, not all of it, because right now I think it's a big challenge of um, talents, expertise, intelligence, systems. We need all this to be in place in order to own everything, but that may be further down the road. Mm. But so far, I think agencies do have a big role to play here. I'm not sure if you're aware, but there was a football, big football club that launched on Cena Weibo just this week. They decided to do it in-house. Um, the f of the first 11 posts made over three days, four of them have since been deleted. They were slammed by the fans. It, it, it was not genuine. Uh, they were too promotional. Um, they didn't reward with any contest or launch. They, they actually um, retweeted posts from celebrities that they thought were going to support them. However, some of those celebrities were supporting rival teams that they didn't even know. So you as an agency would have been aware of all that. You would have done the research because that's your core business. And so, and uh, I think like some of the terms being used on this Chinese account were more Cantonese. That's what they were having, having Cantonese people working on the accounts. So they took that for granted as well. It was a foreign football club um, and they took it for granted, all these things. And this has only happened this week, but it's going to be interesting to see how they play it moving forward. But just a great example of not playing enough weight or not taking it serious enough. Yeah. Sounds like you better make a call. Sounds like a job uh, for mailman. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Doug, you clearly see the, the, the benefits of media agencies here. Like, for example, what, why are media agencies the best or one of the best um, to, to handle social media management versus other type of companies like, you know, creative agencies well, or even PR <coughs> firms? Well, our, our core function and capability really is understanding people, how they lead their lives, how they use media and connecting our clients, brands and messages to those. And Social media is such a big part of what people are doing these days, particularly in China and with big numbers. So it's all part of how people spend their day. And they want to have different messages at different time of the day and in different media. So it's, a just, it's another communication channel for us. But in China, because of the size and scale and importance in people's lives, it's so you know, vital for the overall communication plan. 
And I can't imagine a big gap if you took it out. You know, we're doing the television, we're doing the outdoor, and we're doing online, and we're doing search, and, but we don't do social. It's kind of maybe not everyone knows what everyone's doing. So it's a coordinated, well-planned, integrated effort. Is the rise of small social media companies a threat? Look, in every area that we work in in China, there are small companies doing good work, cost efficiently, and probably providing a good, a good service. But we think the, the value comes from the integration and the understanding and really being able to know the client's business. Like, you know, Andrew was referencing that football club. I mean, we would know the situation. Social media would be part of what we were doing for the client not everything or the whole lot of the clients work. So it's an integrated, well thought through, you know, plan. Yeah, I think, I, yeah, I was, yeah. Going, go. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say that social media should be part of everything we do yeah. in organization. I think that's the future trend. Yeah, and uh, one of the, I mean, one of the beautiful things about social media, the barriers to entry are relatively low for an agency. So you do see a growth of, like a lot, I've seen a lot of Chinese agencies pop up, but um, I, I think that the market has been shifted, especially in China, where there's a lot of sort of arbitrage numbers out there that may not be uh, accurate. And so that can disrupt the marketplace a little because that can set inaccurate expectations from clients. You know, you might get a client go, oh, we wanted one million views on our YouTube, YouTube video because we saw this client have that one. Although it may be uh, fake, they don't care. They want to represent a great number to management. And so you've got, you've got other things to manage. But uh, and cost structure is different too with local agencies, the local small agencies and versus bi you know, bigger agencies. Um, so I, I, I still think like for international brands with global reach, it's too important to get it wrong. Uh, so they, have, they really have to go through a credible agency. Um, and that's been demonstrated in a whole bunch of you know, case studies that most people are familiar with. So. Yeah, and we need to understand that it's really got to start with a strategy not just perhaps the executional part of it. I mean, the executional part is probably easier to do and could be done by lots of companies, but the, the overall strategy and what's the role of social in the company and brands mix is something that we, you know, we think that we're well placed to do that. Yeah, I think for uh, when it comes to strategy, it shouldn't be part of the communication yeah. strategy, but also the entire organization strategy. Uh, we think that the future success of companies would be depending on the maturity or uh, the kind of capability uh, they're able to make the most out of social media for marketing purposes, for consumer insight, for CRM, for better R&D, for PR, for e even for HR management, etc. And this is becoming a, a more prominent trend as we see international, um, for, ex for instance, some um, food and beverage companies, they have started to build their own in-house social media command center where they can real-time monitor what's going on in different parts of the mm. country. Of course, that's part of the global initiative, and then we are rolling that out for China. So this is becoming much more important than before, uh, as well as the importance of working together with other departments. To give you an example, some of the, um, uh, for instance, a, a diaper brand, they are sold through e-commerce websites. And then when the consumers, they receive the products by visual evidences, they suspect that these are counterfeit, they are not real. So in, in such kind of cases, it's not just a matter of the brand team who should get involved. Maybe it should also involve um, e-commerce team, even PR team, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So it really um, is about orchestrated effort of social, but across departments with synergy. Yeah, and, and I think uh, that's exact, exactly right. And one of the key things that we've always got to remember is crisis management in China, which can hit any company at any time. And that has to be part of the overall strategy. How would you deal with that? Um, because it can come out of nowhere. There's a recent example in Singapore. I think McDonald's were released a, a new Happy Meal or one of their product lines, and they were giving away a free toy. And what happened was they they it was the toy was only available on delivery, McDelivery, and so they started delivering all the stuff. But they they pretty fast they sold out. But the social media team were not aware of that because maybe they were in different offices or they weren't aware of say the product product strategy going on that was being marketed on billboards and outdoor and this type of thing uh, but everyone who didn't get the toy they just quickly went to social media to to you know really they were asking questions like when will the toys be there? and no one knew who were, who were on the social media team and so people started to get really angry said hey I ordered this food you didn't tell me you never made an announcement on your Facebook account that the, uh, the the toy wasn't available and so they really play it out where they can and where they can is on their social media channels so that social media team is not aware of broader product or business strategy going on, it's evidence that it you know, can, disrupt, can disrupt the brand. Yeah. 
So is it really taking ownership of uh, social media management, or is it just a matter of getting everybody to work together? Uh, well, I think uh, as for now, I, th I think it's about aligning the agencies to do their job the best they can. But also on the client side, it's about moving towards a more mature social business, uh, which is about, like for instance, building a um, steering committee like a social center of excellence. So the entire social efforts will be orchestrated from corporate level to brand level with good synergy. So how much infighting do you see among different agencies working with the same client, particularly you know, trying to get control of the social media business as well as um, you know, create, among creative and digital agencies? Well, there's a little bit that goes on. I mean, we're all competing with, uh, with other agencies and other businesses for our clients' uh, revenue and, and projects. Um, we don't really worry too much about what other people are doing. We go forward with what we believe is right. Um, we've got a pretty good seat at the table. Um, we control most of the money in terms of the media investment, so uh, we don't really have a problem being heard. And I guess if, if, if the client feels there's someone with more capability than us, then that's a decision for them, them to make and we'll work with that, that uh, company. But most of the time we can win over the client on the integration and the value of, of you know, consistency and quality of product. I think PR agencies have, have started to really put their hand up and go, we can do social as well. That's, I've seen that trend at Mailman when we're talking to clients when they have an incumbent PR agency and all of a sudden the client may request social media services and then they, they've been pushed in that direction. I've certainly seen that, that connection. I, I haven't seen so much infighting with other bigger groups though. But that, that will settle down over time. And as we've all said a couple of times today, it's a newer industry, newer capability and if you go back and look at uh, you know when digital came, everyone wanted to try and grab a piece of that, and uh, you know it'll settle down, and the clients will pick the right partner, and we'll we'll move forward, and something else will come up. <laughs> I don't know what that will be, but something else will come up, and then we'll all you know be grappling for that. Well, Andrew, Tina, and uh, Doc, thanks for being on Thoughtful China sure. today. Thanks. Thank you. That wraps it up for today. Be sure to subscribe to us on Youku and YouTube. You can also follow us on Weibo and Twitter and join our LinkedIn group. See you again.